In this video, me and Shay are going on two fossil hunts, followed by a third episode where we're looking at three of our favourite fossils that our dad has prepared. It's an absolutely jam-packed episode, so let's get started. Me and Shay have come out fossil hunting today. It's quite a large, fresh fall. A lot of shale has come down. We're going to head over to it and see if there's any fossils laid there, ready to pick up. Hopefully, whilst we're out today, we'll also find some other fossils. Let's get started and head over to the fall. It's quite a trek to get to the location of where the fresh shale has fallen down. We have no idea whether anyone else has already been to the fall and found all of the fossils from it, if there are any, or if we are the first people to come across it. Hopefully there's going to be plenty of finds for us to pick up as soon as we get there. Shea's fully prepared with his rucksack, as you can see. Got a couple of different sized hammers for opening up different sized rocks. Having a variety of tools will help us open up the rocks containing fossils in the best way possible. Here's a look at the first fossil of the day. Can you spot where it is? Right down there we've got a lovely impression of a pyritic ammonite. Oh, a little complete ammonite as well. The edge of it showing just there. And we'll leave this here for someone else to find. Some of the clips from today have quite a lot of wind noise, so I'm just going to narrate over them. We've now reached where the shale has freshly fallen down. Looks like the sea has potentially washed over it a couple of times. But we can already spot a particularly large nodule sat right there. Let's have a closer look at it. which I'll look at properly in just a moment. Quite a few compressed ammonites, and even those are really nice to look at. This little nodule over here. Looks like it's got at least two ammonites in. Partial one right there. And another another at the end hopefully and let's look at the bigger nodule can we see anything inside or well, anything that's showing oh, it's a big lump probably needs two hands to pick it up really me and Shay will definitely crack this nodule open hard to tell if there's going to be anything inside but we'll find out in just a moment when we open these two up as well as those two nodules I've already spotted some others just a little bit further away. There's two in particular which are sat right there, just waiting to be picked up. A little bit of shale covering the top of them. This first nodule doesn't look particularly worth opening up, it's quite flat. In comparison, this nodule looks much more promising. A large pyritic nodule and I'm very hopeful that this will contain a pretty large Elegantiserous ammonite. Can't wait to open this one up. Shea has also found several of his own ammonite nodules. Unfortunately some of the clips due to where we were filming were very distorted by the wind noise. But as you can see, the nodules he's found are at least as large as the one that I initially found. Thankfully, Shay's brought his larger hammer, and that's going to enable us to open those rocks up, hopefully quite easily. We're about to find out. Let's open them up. Let's crack open this first Jurassic nodule.
like it's going to be empty this one. Yeah, I think so. this little one next. Looks like it's going to open quite easily. Yeah, hopefully. Might even put my bit of a hand this one. Hey! It's a nice little one. The pyrite started to rot on the outside of the nodule, but ah, the outside inside is perfect. That is so nice. This bigger one next time. Okay, looks promising. And a little one on this side. Hopefully, there's a bigger one in. Further. Yeah, very small one. <laughs> it's one of the best ones I've seen in a long time. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Might even be one of our biggest 3D ones that we've ever found. It's somewhere else that, isn't it? You know it's something special when it makes us get excited. <laughs> it's even got a little one in his mouth border just there. But it's got a couple. bit of the ammonite there's come off the little one but it's on the negative so we can stick that back on and pr prepare it. Absolutely. Stunner. I've still got three more to open up. One looks like it's going to open so easily. I can already see a crack. Look at that. You can probably just literally tap that onto another rock and it'd open up. It's so easy, doesn't it? Yeah, we'll give it a go. You've said it now. It looks like one of those weird shaped ones where there's going to be a, yeah. a calcite through the middle. It's really odd. Oh, and I was right. Oh. <laughs> calcite running straight through the middle. It's almost as if you'd done this before. <laughs> Oh, it does look pretty cool. Looks almost like a little geode. But it's not what we're looking for, is it? Fortunately not. We need another big ammonite. <laughs> Here we go. second I thought it could have been split a bit easier than the first one we tried to whack open all right last but not least Can't complain. Can't complain at all. Got the big specimen and this lovely little one. In order to fully protect the largest specimen, we're taking it together, both the fossil itself and the imprint or the impression of the fossil, carefully taping it together just to make sure that it doesn't rattle about in our bag and scratch any of the surface of the ammonite itself. A fossil, especially this one, it's always worth taking all of the pieces so you keep it fully protected. It'll keep it in the best condition possible.
Now we're going to head to the next part of the beach and see what other fossils we can find. I'll have a look for some fossils myself, as will Shea, then we'll meet up. Got quite a lot of really nice fossils there, especially that big ammonite. It's really incredible. We're going to continue our fossil hunt and hopefully we'll find some more fossils. Shea's going to go a little bit further up ahead and have a look and see what he can find. And on our way over to meet him, let's have a look amongst the pebbles and shingle and see if there's any fossils that we can find along the way. Have a little look amongst these pebbles, see if there's much to find. Can't really see too much at first glance. Let's head further up the beach instead and have a look there. It's a Bellum Knight fossil. Right there. It's quite eroded. Probably come loose if I applied a little bit of pressure. at home and preserve it would have undoubtedly just got eroded away within the next few weeks if it had been left there it's also a big plank of wood you can see it there starting to expose Another pretty interesting fossil that I just spotted from a few metres away. Pretty nice big size. Again, this is another fossil which I'll leave for you for someone else to see. There's a few crushed ammonites and shells on this nodule. A little piece of wood as well. Nothing too interesting there though. I've got to the next part of the beach with quite a few pebbles to look through. This is the first fossil that I've come across. Little pebble with various partial ammonites inside of it. And further over, I found something a little bit more exciting. Again, it's another ammonite, however, it looks to be a complete nodule. Hoping that it contains perfect ammonite. Shea's still a bit further ahead of me. On our way back, we'll remove the nodule from this shale slab and open the nodule up. There's a nodule here with something inside. Can't tell what just yet. Hard to tell exactly what it is. It's not a fossil bone, it could be a coprolite though. It's got some lovely clusters of pyrite on it. Look how golden that is. Overall, we're having a great fossil hunt so far. Not the particularly best of weather with all of the wind, however, still plenty of fossils around and more fossils yet to come. Getting closer to meeting up with Shea now. As soon as we meet up, we'll see the fossils that he's managed to come across. 
on one of these big slabs, I've spotted what appears to be a partial ichthyosaur rib. See if you can spot where it is. It's a little bit worn away, but you can see there a couple of little pieces of the rib. The imprint where it's totally eroded, and there's actually a pretty nice section of intact rib it's still laid there. Pretty decent sized rib. leave it here though for someone else to see when they come walking along it's a pretty interesting find it's also an ammonite that I spotted it's on screen now if you can spot where it is Big nodule there, you can make out part of the outer world. Pretty decent size, again with lots of pyrite. A few little specimens preserved next to it as well. Doesn't look like it's going to be 3D though, so it's another one that I'll leave there for others to see as they come along. head over to where Shay's been having a look, see if he's managed to find any more fossils as well. As well as our other finds, here's a piece of jet that I just came across. This is often turned into jewellery in Whitby. It's not very common to find. Pretty nice looking piece. See it's got a lot of the grain preserved. Pretty nice quality. I'm sure it would polish up really well too. Potentially a little fossil preserved. Or the imprint of a fossil preserved on the back of it as well. Hard to entirely make out what it is but possibly an ammonite or shell. Hard to know for sure. Finding all kinds of fossils today. I've met back up with Shay now and he's found a number of additional fossils to when we last saw him. Sure, look at this one, I've just cracked it. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> one of the best ones of the day. Just missed watching you open that as well. Watching you crack it open, but at least we got to see the reveal. That's a stunner. It would have been huge if that bit was there as well. Yeah. So you've just opened that one. Got a few other partial specimens. It's a nice little Hildoceros there. You can see it's got quite different ribbing and different sized whorls to the Dactyloceros we've been finding and the Elegantisterus from earlier. You've also got these unopened nodules as well. It's really tempting to split these open, isn't it? Yeah, especially that nice little doceris. Wow, look how pyritic that one is. So many lovely fossils today. Let's keep coming.
We've finished the majority of our fossil hunt now. The only remaining thing left to do is remove the nodule from within that shale slab, which we spotted before meeting back up with the shale. I wonder if we can get another fossil to add to the already impressive amount of finds that we got from today's fossil hunt. As it turned out, unfortunately, that nodule was totally empty. That's a look at the first fossil hunting episode. Next up, I'm going down to the beach on another day to have a look for some more fossils. I'm going to a different beach this time and hopefully there's going to be plenty to find. Let's have a look. Found a couple of lovely ammonite nodules on the beach. One's pretty big and contains the edge of a really large Harposterus ammonite. And the other contains what looks to be, or hopefully turns out to be, a perfect Dactylioceros ammonite. So let's walk along the beach and have a look at those and open them up. I've also got a nice little Nautilus fossil which I found on a recent fossil hunt as well, so I'll show you that at the end of the video. couple of nodules I've put on the beach just ahead of this waterfall. I'm gonna have a little look for some more fossils as we walk across and we'll open those big nodules up. At least one of them has an ammonite in for sure. A lot of loose shale, a lot of the fossils in this stuff are uh, just completely squashed flat such as this block full of shells Here's the two nodules I found earlier, sat right over there, let's go have a look at them. This first one, you can see the nice edge of a lovely big ammonite. Unfortunately, it looks like it's almost all worn away. However, I'm gonna try and split it through anyway and see if there's any, any quality part of the fossil left that's not been completely crushed. And the other nodule, I'm pretty sure this is a nice ammonite sat on the top. So it's a bit tricky to know what exactly to do with this one. Let's open this one up first. Got my hammer to open these nodules up. Also, there's another nodule which I found along the way, which hopefully contains a nice ammonite as well. I think I'll probably leave that one as it is, do something with it at a later date. And these two, I think these are the best ones to open for this video. Let's open this first nodule up.
Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. Gosh. Don't think I was quite expecting it to be that nice. That's oh, brilliant. Might as well open up the other one now as well. So, the ammonite is complete. And also, the negative is as well. So good. Very nice. The next nodule to open up is this much bigger one where we can see the edge of the ammonite already. I'm not as confident this one's going to open as nicely as the other one. It looks pretty badly preserved and crushed. However, we're going to give it a go anyway, just on the off chance. Here we go. Got all our tools. Let's see if we can open it up. So, where's Shay when you need him to help open these? Okay, so that's broken off and revealed a bit of it. Looks like it is totally squashed all the way through. But never mind. So you can see that's where it came round and all the centre is all completely squashed as well. So not a very good example, unfortunately. However, at least the other ammonite we got was a really nice one. That's just the way it goes sometimes. I hope you've enjoyed the first part of the video, seeing those two nodules get opened up. I'm now going to show the Nautilus fossil that I found on a recent fossil hunt. I hope you enjoy that clip as well. I found here what I thought was just a really crushed, poorly preserved ammonite specimen. However, I've chipped off with my hammer and chisel a little bit of this outer edge and it's revealed something pretty impressive. It certainly surprised me. So I'm gonna reveal a little bit of shell that I've chipped off and then we'll wash it in the water and you can see exactly what it is. You can already tell now However, it looks really lovely when it's been wet in the water as well. That's a look at the second episode from this fossil hunting video. Next up, we're going to be having a look at those three incredible fossils which our dad has prepared. I'll tell you all about them in just a moment. In today's video, me and Shay are going to be showing you three of our favourite fossils in our collection that our dad has prepared. We're going to be showing you a Lepidotus fish, an ichthyosaur skull, and a large section from an articulated ichthyosaur. Some of these fossils we've shown on our previous fossil hunts, and here's a video showing all three specimens so you can have a look at all of them. If you've already seen these specimens in previous videos, I hope you enjoy seeing them again. If there's any fossils in particular that you'd like to see in future videos, 
let us know in the comments and we can have a look and see if we can include them in upcoming videos. Let's get straight into it. The first fossil we're going to be having a look at is the section of articulated ichthyosaur bones. We've come down to the beach to show you this incredible find. Me and Shay have both come down with the fossil and we're going to show you it. This is a fossil that Shay genuinely saw fall out of the cliff. He was out at the beach looking for ammonites and unbelievably a few rocks fell down and this was one of them. Absolutely insane that this has happened. Probably a once in a lifetime event. To physically see it fall out the cliff is just something that I've never even heard of or never had it happen to me. My dad has prepared the fossil after many, many hours. We're also lucky enough to have a few other pieces which join onto it, but they're not prepared yet. Shay's gonna bring the fossil over now and he's gonna show you it. And I think you're gonna absolutely love it just as much as we do. Let's get Shay to bring it over and we'll have a look at it. Here is a look at the fossil that Aaron has just been talking about. It's a huge section of an ancient marine reptile called an ichthyosaur. It's all articulated and I think it looks absolutely stunning. It's a long section of a vertebra column with ribs that are running over the vertebra, which I think really adds to the piece. We've got some suspected, what we think are predation marks. So if we just look down here, we think this is where another beast living back in those times has actually tried to eat part of the creature. There's also another little tooth delve just there, which is really cool and just shows how savage these beasts must have been. What did you think it was when you heard it fall out of the cliff? Well, like, like most people, you wouldn't expect it to be anything, but I thought, better safe than sorry, went over to the cliff to see what had fallen out. And I actually found this along with a fully articulated paddle that had fallen out the cliff. So a paddle actually joins to this section of nodule. And as well as that, we've got a large part of the vertebra column still to attach to the rest of the block, which is really exciting. One of your favourite finds then? Oh definitely, one of them. <laughs> definitely up there. Looks quite heavy. Yeah, it's reasonably heavy. Solid block of bones. Here's a closer look at the bones that we've just shown you. The quality of the bones is absolutely superb. My dad has done an incredible job preparing it. There's a lot going on with this fossil. I particularly love the predation marks and the fact that a lot of the ribs are broken as they've been fossilized. The bone itself has so many details. A lot of them you can only see closer up. And as Shay mentioned, there are several more bones which actually fit onto this piece, including part of the paddle. Those are all still currently being prepared as well as many other things that my dad is currently working on. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at that marine reptile fossil. Shay is very pleased with it, as are all of us. I'm incredibly fortunate to have my dad preparing these fossils. A piece like that can easily take 100 hours or more. Very, very time consuming. A lot of you already know as well that Shay does this full time. Although fossils like this are kept in our collection, we do prepare and part with many other decent quality fossils which we'd also be happy to have in our collection but we just can't keep all of them. If you'd like to get a fossil to support my dad and Shay in what they do, please consider checking out his website yorkshirefossils.net and there's lots of specimens there to choose from. Thanks in advance if you decide to support our page. The next fossil that we're going to be having a look at is a fossilised fish. Shay is going to also be telling you all about that one. Some of you might recognise this fossil. It's by far one of our favourites. It's a Lepidotus fish. 
it has amazing mirror-like black scales. And it's absolutely stunning. My dog's done an amazing job prepping this. It's one of our favourite fish fossils in our collection and by far one of the best. And I'm sure you can see why. The fossil isn't fully finished being prepared. However, the majority, the bulk of the rock has been removed. Still quite a bit more work to do though, to get it finished. Me and Aaron were out hunting on the beach together and we saw a slab with some scales and we checked it, didn't think there was anything else but I actually went back, lifted some shale from the slab and to our disbelief there was actually a fish head in the rock and I couldn't believe that Aaron had missed it because Aaron rarely misses anything so I was really really surprised and uh, really pleased that we found it. The fish specimen we've just been talking about hasn't actually been prepared yet but we presume it's going to be the fish head along with some fish fin and hopefully some fish scales as well. My dad's planning on using the air preparation tools to prep the fish head, but we may have to use acid as well. Once it's prepared, we'll show it on video. We aren't sure how long the fossil is going to take to prepare because we have other projects that we are working on, but hopefully we get to show you that soon. And last but not least, the third fossil from this video is a predated ichthyosaur skull. Really excited to show you this. The fossil that we're showing here is one that me and my family found while we were all out together. My mum and dad actually wandered further along the beach and me and Aaron stayed behind. And just as we were wandering further towards my parents, Aaron shouted me over and said, oh, there's a partial paddle in this lab here. And I didn't believe him at first, so I went over to check. And to my disbelief, we could actually see some paddle digits but it was part of a huge slab, so we thought there might be something else inside. We asked my dad what we should do, and he said just take the full slab, just in case there were the bones inside. And when we took it home and prepared it, this is what we were left with. The predated ichthyosaur skull. It's pretty amazing, it's, the jaws are still full of teeth. I like the fact that it's predated because it tells more of a story and just shows what happened to these animals before the dies and what happened after the dies. So what have we actually got in this slab then? So we've got the partial paddle, which is what we saw initially. But what else is here? We've got the partial paddle, a limb bone. We've got some disarticulated pieces of jaw, which must have been ripped from the animal while it was presumably just washing about the sea. A few ribs, loads of teeth. I mean, it just looks amazing with all those teeth. The bone quality is superb as well. I love all the detail. What's also remarkable is that this specimen is complete to the very tip of the rostrum. Really, really rare for that to be fully preserved and not eroded away. We were lucky that the skull was hidden beneath the shale and completely intact. The paddle was unfortunately quite possibly all preserved but the majority of that had just weathered away. Thankfully though as we say the skull was intact. I was proud of place in our collection and we're so glad that we found it. It makes it even more special that we found it while we were all together as a family. Every single nodule here contains an ammonite fossil. They range from large to small ammonites and also different species. The majority of nodules here will open up really well. You can never guarantee which ones will, however these have the best chance. If you'd like a selection of ammonites to open up yourself at home, please contact us on our Instagram page, yorkshire.fossils, or alternatively visit our official website, yorkshirefossils.net, for both ammonites to open yourself, as well as fully prepared specimens. And if you do get some, I really hope you enjoy opening them, and thanks in advance for supporting what we do. And there we have it. I hope you've enjoyed looking at all three of those specimens. I hope you like them as much as we do. As I mentioned earlier in the video, if there's any fossils that we haven't shown before that you'd like us to show, let us know in the comments. We can certainly see if we can include them in some future videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.